Hey, welcome in again to Faithful Leaders. Uh, I'm your host, Jake, and I'm here with Thomas again. And Thomas, we're going to talk about David today, who was feeling pretty burnt out. Uh, and I, I know a lot of people can relate to that right now. So what was going on with David? David was feeling depleted of energy at the end of the day. Uh, he was low on that. And he was you know, just pressing through his day and pushing, 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 because there was so much work to do. There's always more than we can do, right? Mm -hmm. And so, especially with things going on in the world now, it's just, it adds such an extra weight to us. It's not just the work that we have to do, but there's a spiritual component. And there's a definite battle against uh, all the things that are going on around us. Yeah, for sure. And, and a lot of us are looking for different ways to, to plug that gap and figure things out. Uh, so what did you tell David that he needed to work on? Well, we talked about what does meaningful momentum actually mean for him in his day. And so uh, I looked first at Hebrews 12 too. There's a spiritual component, and then there's a practical component. To so the spiritual component, if we read Hebrews 12 too, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So there's a few lessons in that verse that I think are really key to actually what happens in our day as we go about. We see that we can be faithful because of this great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, Abraham, Moses, and all of those that the author of Hebrews talks about. Great witnesses as to how to be faithful every day. Uh, second, we understand that our desires and our beliefs are often in the wrong spot. We need to weigh, ought to weigh aside the weights that encumber us. We're not desiring the right things. We're not believing the right things that God's promises are true and work for us in the moments of the day. And then we want to cast our gaze, look to Jesus, who is the example for us. We can't look around and say, boy, how do I get out of this muck that I'm in, the circumstances that I'm in? We have to look to the greater reward. And Jesus endured um, for reward. He endured the worst imaginable punishment in the world, death on a cross, so that he has this joy set before him, the joy of purchasing a people for himself and people to be with him, with whom he can share his joy and happiness forever. Uh, and so that is a great reward. Um, and so we can take some principles from that. That's first spiritually, we ought to look to Jesus. And that's what gives us our faithful a desire to go. And then we can take that and, and talk about how we do that practically. Yeah, that's great. And I mean, anytime we can start with the spiritual, you know, it's going to fix it long term, right? So um, how does that look? Because, you know, I, just me hearing you say that, I go, great, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. But how do I do that? Right. Well, I talked to David about that. And we, we, you find that the spiritual and the practical and the physical are often intertwined. Our bodies can get habituated under sinful practices, desire and beliefs. So what David did was he built the momentum routine. So a momentum routine is just something that um, I've de designed and called uh, so that we can have more meaningful moments in our day, minimizing the loss that we experience and, and maximizing reward, particularly reward in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so what he did was he built in these rewards at the end of a piece of work. He'd focus, I'm going to get this done in the next 30 minutes, then I'm going to take a five minute break. Um, and he'd walk outside. And he would look at the sunshine, looking up to the sun, which is a common grace reminder of Jesus and uh, his presence in our lives. So it's a great, great gift to be able to do that. And then he'd pray before meetings. And so by interspersing those between his meetings and his work throughout the day, he found that he not only was able to get more done and have more energy at the end of the day, but then that carried more meaningful moments into his evening so he could spend it with his family uh, and friends and community in the way that he wanted to and have more meaningful moments every single day and more endurance. That's great. That's great. And that's what I think what we're all looking for is that balance yeah. that, that you hear so many people talk about. So thanks for sharing that today. Uh, if you're joining us here on YouTube, you can check below to subscribe so you can get some more great stories and practical tips like this. Uh, also, if you'd like to look into more of what Thomas does with groups and one-on-one -on -one stuff, you can check out the website. There's links below. You can check all those out. Thomas, thanks again for sharing what you did today with us. You bet. Be faithful.